everyone and welcome to a new week of devotions from the team here at Andover Baptist Church. I'm so pleased that you're joining me this week. My name's Chris Porter and I'm the Senior Minister at ABC. This week we're going to be looking at the beginning of a story of a great leader in the Old Testament part of the Bible and looking at some lessons for leadership. And before I get into that, I want to address the question of who is a leader, because you may be thinking right now, this isn't for me. I'm not a leader. Well, I beg to differ. It's my contention that all of us are leaders because leadership is often defined in the context of influence. If you're in a position to influence others, then you are a leader. It may only be a small number of people. It may only be one other, but you are still a leader. Or it may be a team or it may be loads of people, but we all have influence. Maybe in our families with people we're caring for, maybe with older relatives or young children, maybe with partners or nieces and nephews. Maybe it's at work where we're leaders, with the team we're working with, or who we are working for, or who's working for us. Maybe it's in our roles at church as a part of a leader of a connect group or a serving team. Maybe it's with friends at school or college or at university or in some other setting. We're all leaders in some way, shape or form. And we all have the opportunity to influence the culture in which we live and in which we operate. So we're going to look together at a great leader from the Old Testament this week and take lessons from the beginning of his leadership journey. His name was Nehemiah. And the story starts when we find Nehemiah in exile with the majority of the people of Israel under the control of the king of Persia, a king called Artaxerxes. And Nehemiah was serving as cupbearer to the king. And we go right to the beginning of the book with Nehemiah's name on it in the Old Testament part of the Bible. And I'm going to read from Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. It says this, The words of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah. In the month of Kislev, in the twentieth year, while I was in the citadel of Susa, Hanani, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men. And I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile and also about Jerusalem. So Nehemiah's brother... And others arrived from Judah, the land that they used to occupy, the land that they used to live in before the exile. And Nehemiah questions them about the state of his people and of their capital, the holy city, Jerusalem. He's curious about the state of things. And this is the first characteristic of a leader that we're going to look at this week. It's about being curious. You know, curiosity is a great habit to have, and it's different to nosiness, by the way. Curiosity is a great habit to have, to ask questions, to seek to understand why, to want to know more. It's a great characteristic for us in our teams, in our families, in our relationships, with people that we're leading, with people that we work for. You know, great people ask great questions. And seeking to understand before we offer comment or advice is a great trait, a great habit. And great leaders, whatever their context or situation, are also open to God's call. They're curious about what God wants for their situation and for their leadership. And they're asking God, what's next? What do you want me to do? What opportunity do you want me to step into? What do you have in store for me today? Before Nehemiah can get to work, he needs to know what's going on. And great people, great leaders, create space for the truth, however painful that might be. And the truth is painful for Nehemiah, as we read on in verse 3. They, brothers and others, said to Nehemiah, Those who have survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. You know, things aren't going well for the people left in their homeland. But Nehemiah creates space to hear the truth, however painful that might be. You know, if worry or fear are controlling us, then we shy away from curiosity and from knowing the truth and the reality of that. So if we're to be great leaders, then we need to ensure that we are casting our fears and our worries onto God. The God who says over and over again, don't be afraid and don't worry. So perhaps today and over the coming days, you would find the opportunities to ask great questions, to be curious, to listen to the answers and to create space for the truth to be spoken, however painful that might be. Maybe there'd be questions in your family about your relationships, about your marriage. Maybe it would be questions of your kids. How am I doing as a mum or a dad? Maybe it would be questions of people that you work with or your teams or the people you serve with in church. How are we doing? Is there anything we could do better or do differently? 
And maybe you would ask questions before you pass comment. And you know, sometimes we need to spend some time giving our fears and our worries over to God. So our fears and our worries don't stop us from being open to what God might want to be saying and doing. And maybe we take the time and the space too to ask God what's next, to be curious with God about what he's calling us to step into. Today's song is called Here I Am by North Point Worship. And the chorus goes like this. Here I am, all I have is in your hands, where I'm meant to be. As I surrender, I can see. When I let go, you carry me. It's a great song to use to cast our fears and our worries onto God and to say, here I am, and I'm curious for what you have for me next as I surrender my life into your hands. Let's pray together. Dear God, help us to be curious. Help us not to be afraid of the truth. Help us to create space in our relationships and in the teams that we're involved in or the family that we're involved in or whatever it might be, to create space, to ask great questions and to hear the truth. Help us to not allow our own fears and anxieties and worries to have control over us such that we don't create the space for what you want to say to us or what others need to say to us. Help us to develop this habit of curiosity. Help us to ask great questions before we rush in to providing answers or advice or comment. Lord God, we thank you for Nehemiah. We thank you for his willingness to be open to what people wanted to say to him. Thank you for his curiosity to ask questions. And thank you, as we shall see later in the week, because of that, you did amazing things through him. Help us to be curious with you too about what you have for us and your call on our lives. Amen. Thanks so much for joining me today. There's a link to that song uh, in the description below this video. I really hope you'll take some time now to listen and to allow God to speak to you. And I'll look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.